Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 9a, first portion of 9, and can be found on page 688 in the Old Testament section of your pew Bibles. Listen for the word of God. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me for righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. It's, is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard and then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help. And he will say, here I am. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This can be found on page 166 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles. Listen again for the word. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak of God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for the glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts 
bestowed on us by God. Our final reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, which can be found on page 4, also in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles. From the Gospel, according to Matthew. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Well, the Winter Olympic Games have begun. Some of you may have watched the opening ceremonies on Friday night, and some of you may be up in the middle of the night to watch the live broadcast. Some of you will catch it in the prime time of Eastern time. Several new sports have been added to the Olympics this winter. Some old favorites have been spruced up. We now have snowboard slope style. If you'd like a challenge, try to say that three times fast. Snowboard slope style. We now have women ski jumping. Figure skating has added a new team dimension, much like the gymnastics competition of the summer, winter, summer Olympics. Some of these events have, were added as a strategy for regaining some of the young audience. Many of those events were born at the X Games, edgier sports, fewer constraints, more creativity, saltier, perhaps. Imagine the shock of those folks who gathered on that Galilean hillside. They heard Jesus tell them, that they were the salt of the earth. Now, we would probably like Jesus calling us the salt of the earth because in our time, that phrase has come to ref say something about people who are steadfast and reliable. Those are the people that are the salt of the earth. But that's not really what Jesus was saying. One commentator has suggested that we ought to paraphrase this text, you are the red hot peppers of the earth, <laughs> the salsa of life. Ole! We are to spruce things up, spice things up, stir things up, and make otherwise distracted people sit up and take notice, not of us but of all of the wonderful things God is doing in the world. Douglas John Hall, who is a 20th and 21st century Reformed theologian, writes this. Christianity got a foothold in the world, and for a vital and vocal minority, changed the world. Because the church proclaimed a message that awakened women and men to possibilities for human life, that they had either lost or never imagined. Salt. 
The church proclaiming a message that awakens men and women and boys and girls to possibilities for human life that they had either lost or never imagined. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. This is about our function. Now, in Jesus' day, the function of salt is pretty much the function of salt today. Certainly to season, to preserve, to purify. But there is one more use for salt in Jesus' day, which generally is not a part of our own Salt was used for making sacrifices, that is, for entering into covenants and establishing relationships. Now, to give you an idea, an alternative wedding ritual of our time includes the exchange and mingling of salt between people that are being united in covenant with God. This is what offbeatbride.com has to say. During ancient times, agreements and promises were sealed by a salt covenant. Each person would take a pinch of salt from their pouch and place it in the pouch of another. This covenant, this agreement then, could not be broken unless an individual could retrieve their own grains of salt. It's a powerful image, isn't it? Salt is used for making covenants. Being the salt of the earth has to do with living in the world as God's people in ways which preserve it, which spice it up and season it, purify it, and also living in a way that invites others into God's covenant of love as well. God has placed us here to savor to preserve, and also as witness. Now notice here that Jesus doesn't exhort us to be the salt of the earth, doesn't exhort us to become the salt of the earth. He simply states reality, you are the salt of the earth. It is a given that emerges out of following him. As is often the case with many of Jesus' teachings, especially these very straightforward ones, which Jesus almost always is pretty straightforward, what we hear as a statement of reality also becomes a warning. If we are not, if you and I are not engaged in preserving, in seasoning, in purifying, in being God's covenant people in this world, and inviting others into that loving covenant, then we are just like adulterated salt, good for nothing. Now you and I know that salt never loses its taste by some chemical miracle. Sodium chloride remains sodium chloride. But salt does lose its ability to season, to preserve or to purify. When it is so mixed with other things, salt sometimes no longer is no longer able to function as salt. When you and I, as the people of God, become so diluted by the values and the concerns of the world around us, that we might find ourselves actually no longer following Jesus. And we have rendered ourselves useless as the salt of the earth. The danger here is that you and I cease to be Christ's savor or preservation when our own lives become diluted with a host of all these other things that we make equally or, in fact, more important. Now, this is both a corporate warning and an individual warning, a personal warning. If you and I, when we leave this place, leave our faith at the door, then we cease being saver. We cease being preservers or witnesses. And likewise, as a church, as a whole congregation, if we are not clearly distinguishable from the world in which we minister, then we must beware 
and be aware. Are we proclaiming the gospel of the culture? Or are we proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You, a city set on a hill. As you and I know so well, the church is not a secret sort of esoteric society which exists in private retreats or in some ashram on a mountaintop, although those experiences can be important for our ongoing discipleship. Again, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. It's not something that he tells us to become. It's not something we seek to be. Like being salt, being light is a given. And it flows naturally out of following Jesus Christ. And so our light shines. Period. (laughs) It shines. It shines in our neighborhoods. It shines in the streets in our offices, in our classrooms. It shines wherever you and I go, the light of Jesus Christ shines. And as light, you and I and our congregation is a witness, a witness to hope, a witness to God's covenant of life. So we are that light to those who drive by and see a habitat house being built in Falls Church. We are that light for residents at the Lewinsville Retirement Residence or the Chesterbrook Residences and their families. We are that light for children at the Moyes Bridge United Orphanage and Academy in Kenya. We are that light for care receivers as they pray and journey with their Stephen ministers. We are that light for teenagers who find their way to Alternative House and for teenagers in our own midst, a light that shines of hope, even in the wake of suicide. We, we are that light. Last year, I was talking to a gentleman who had attended a funeral service here, and over coffee and refreshments in St. Andrew's Hall, he said to me, don't ever take down that fence. And I clarified that he was talking about the white fence along Great Falls Street, bordering that edge of our churchyard. A fence, by the way, that is on the radar of the management ministry group to repair and to paint. (laughs) Yes, he said, that fence. I hope you're not going to take it down. And I assured him that there was no discussion about that at all. And I asked him, what about that fence so captured him? He said, I have grown up in this area, and I've lived here for close to 60 years. That fence gives me a sense of place. With all of the changes in our area, that fence has been here the whole time. This is an historic church, he said. And although I don't worship here, this church building The graveyard and that fence help to ground me. You are the light of the world. We are a community in the world welcoming the world to come and experience the hope and the joy and the peace that emerges when one follows Jesus Christ as Lord and trusts him as Savior like the Jerusalem of the prophets, a city where all the nations would one day come and walk in its light and worship and serve its God, we are a witness. We are a city on a hill. It is both our mission and our ever-present challenge in this time and in this place. Now, we are a light that exists not to be looked at, but rather to provide illumination. You and I are to shine so brilliantly that like the sun itself, people don't look at us, 
but rather they live in the illumination of our shining, giving thanks to God for our presence. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works. We like that part. We often forget the rest. And give glory to your Father in heaven. We shine not so that people look at us, but so they live within our illumination. Now, we don't generate this light any more than we can make ourselves into salt. Both of those come from a source. And if you and I are to keep from being diluted by the pressures and demands of life, if we are to keep our light shining brightly and not dimmed, then we must remain immersed in and connected to and nourished by our Lord. That's the source of our light. Because it's actually not our light. It's the light of Christ that shines through us. And that immersion, that connection, that nourishment happens every time you and I gather with Christians. Here in worship, when we gather as Christ care groups, when we gather to serve dinner and dine with the residents at Alternative House or assisting young mothers, when we take and make dinner and dine with residents at Christ House, we gain nourishment and connection with the source of our salt, with the source of salt and light. And without that, without that connection, without that nourishment, you and I will very soon be distracted and, by, and diluted by a hundred other things. And we will very soon lose all of our energy to shine at all. Much less burn so brightly will, that people will see the presence of God in us. You are the salt of the earth. And you are the light of the world. Because here we are joined to the one who also is salt and light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.